Rosin to a string player is like chalk to a rock climber, wax to a surfer, yeast to a baker, magnets to a fridge door. Hey guys, what's up? Today we are going to go through how to apply rosin properly so that you can take care of both your rosin and your instrument to make sure that they don't get damaged over time. All right, so first of all, you have to get some rosin and there are a ton out there. Some of them even come with your set of instrument if you've bought yourself a new violin, but those tend to not be that great because they tend to be very dry and brittle. Luckily, a good rosin can be found online for pretty cheap, actually under $20 and can make a huge difference to your sound. So let's establish how to apply the rosin to the bow. So you wanna hold your rosin in your left hand, kind of like a taco. Some rosins come in a rectangular box. You can just hold the box. Others like mine uh, come in a bit of a wrap like this. So you can hold your rosin very carefully uh, with the wrap so that it protects both your fingers from getting sticky as well as the rosin itself. You don't want to pull the wrap back like this because otherwise then you endanger the rosin just coming undone if it's not stuck or glued properly. Next you'll want to hold your bow in your right hand and put your thumb over what's known as the furl. This part is the metal part that kind of feeds into the hair. You'll put your thumb over it, maybe even slightly touching the hair, that's okay. This is to guard against cracking the rosin when it goes up against the frog so that you can get as close to the frog without actually chipping your rosin. So now we're gonna apply the rosin in what I like to call the semi-quaver technique, or for those of you in the States, the 16th note technique. This is good for freshly rehaired bows or new bows that you've just bought that don't have any rosin on it. So you'll start by doing this and then little segments, just making sure that you get the flat of the bow hair up against the rosin. So this is gonna take a while. This is probably gonna take a couple of minutes at least. So while we're applying the rosin, I wanted to share with you this app I've been working on over the past few years, which helps people improve and have more fun while they're practicing. When you're learning how to do something new, like rosining a bow, you probably have a ton of questions on how to do things properly. And throughout my journey, I found that in moments when I didn't know how to do things, uh, being able to ask someone who was more experienced than me was super valuable. And on Tonic, there are so many communities and groups that you can join for free that can answer any of the questions that you might have, like how to rosin a bow. You could even open a practice room with your friends and practice bow rosining together. So definitely give it a go. Like I said, it's free and you can download it by clicking on the link in my description below or by scanning this QR code on this screen right now. So the bush should be pretty well rosin by now. And the next step is to make sure that all that rosin we applied on it is evenly distributed. Now, there's a simple way to do this that is a soulless level secret, and it involves a toothbrush. So what you wanna do is take the brush and point it towards the hair. You'll have to be pretty forceful. It's gonna feel a little bit weird doing this, but what you wanna do is put it down so that the bristles of the brush go in between the hairs, right? And then you'll want to forcefully just drag it across. Like I said, it's gonna feel a little bit sacrilegious. So just keep at it and you can do small brushes, like you're brushing hair, literally. And what this does, it makes the rosin, forces it to be even across, like kind of like horizontally, but also vertically, so it's in between the hairs as well. So you know that feeling where you've just applied a ton of rosin, but it huh? still doesn't feel like you've done anything? Don't apply more. Do this trick instead. And you'll find that it's much better for the longevity of your hair as well as for your instrument because you don't want too much rosin dust. You know, I found that the cheapest types of toothbrush work best. So these are the types that you get for free either on the airline or at your hotel because you don't want the fancy like rubbery types on the end. All right, and now that you've done that, the next step would be to just simply test out to see how the sound is. <laughs> And now the trick is to know how much rosin is enough. I often get asked that question and it should feel a little bit grippy, kind of like, you know, you've got your wet hands across a rubber balloon. So you're just like, kind of like gripping it like that. So when you play it a slow bow, it should sound a bit like this. You should be able to do that. And I know it's an unpleasant sound, but then when you play, you can actually manage to grip the string. That's really important. And that's when you know you have a well applied rosin to bow ratio. And for daily maintenance, I like to just basically give it a few sweeps. You can also still do the brush technique afterwards, but basically what you do is just like one, like a long legato method, two, three, maybe mo no more than five strokes. 
four, five, and that's it. That'll be enough for the following days, and I like to apply that daily. And that's it for basic rosin application. Now, over the course of my career, I've been asked a lot of questions, so these are the top ones surrounding rosin. So the first question is dark versus light rosin. Now, this one's up to personal preference, but I personally prefer slightly darker rosin because, uh, well, darker rosin tends to give a darker sound, not because it's darker, but because of it being grippier due to it being softer and stickier than light rosin. And it's similar to tractions on a tire. So it's like, if you're in a car, you're the heavier tractions, you know, like four wheel drives, SUVs, they tend to grip the ground more. And when that happens, you kind of just get a heavier sound. And then you think about like Formula One drivers, how their wheels are like very smooth and then those goes fast. So you're kind of skidding more across the surface of the string when you use a lighter rosin, but it does give a more brilliant sound. Now, the second question is, is it okay to switch rosins? I prefer not to do that only because when I'm testing out rosins, I like to have a fresh bow uh, when I'm testing it. It's kind of like if your friend were to offer you to try out a new flavor of drink and you're still using the same cup and your drink is only half finished, you wouldn't be able to appreciate that new flavor if they poured that drink into your half drunk cup. So it's like kind of the same principle for me when I'm trying out different rosins. I like to have a whole fresh bow. That being said, it's kind of hard and difficult to do that. So I tend to stick to the ones that I like. All right guys, so now that you've learned how to rosin your bow correctly, the logical next step would be to go practice your Paganini. Just kidding. Mm. You're gonna have to learn how to tune your instrument. So if you don't know how to do that or would like to check out how I do it, go check out this other video that I've made where I go through the steps of identifying pitches to tuning your instrument for beginners. I'll see you in your practice room on tonic. Bye.